Hello, Loita. Welcome back to Shock America. Uh, we are back here again. We recently released a video talking about uh, not only my assessment, but also Jack's assessment of Manuel Baum through the first five games of the season. Uh, this is not going to include the debacle at Wolfsburg, but uh, we're going to look at the tactics through the first five games for Manuel Baum and where do we actually see the team fitting in terms of the tactics that he's uh, put out there thus far. Here we go. All right, the first matchup we're going to talk about uh, is a match against Union Berlin. We're not going to include Leipzig because that was two days' notice, and so he wasn't going to take her too much. So the first week later, he played Union Berlin, or Schalke played Union Berlin, uh, and we we're wondering how the lineup is going to come out. We know Manuel Baum likes to play in a 5-4-1 or a 4-2-3-1 or some variation of that. So on the first matchup against Union Berlin, uh, Union came out in a 4-2-3-1. Uh, so we wanted to know what Manuel Baum would come out in his first try just to see what the team was made of. And they actually came out in a 4-3-3 formation, uh, which, isn't a, which isn't a bad formation at all. But um, in this game, we saw a back four of Ludwig, Sané, Nastasic, and Ochipka. You had a midfield three of Benteleb, Mascarel, Bazduan. Uh, and then up top, you had Skripski, Ibisevic, and Raman. Uh, so that was an okay lineup, but it, it wasn't what the, the lineup that most of us thought was going to happen. But... Uh, for the first game, really, Manuel Baum, all he was trying to do is see what kind of team he had uh, before the big Riviera Derby coming up. Now, speaking of, speaking of the Riviera Derby, um, a big test, no doubt about it. We know how it all ended in that game. It wasn't a pretty game by any stretch. Uh, we What we did see is Manuel Baum, instead of trying to stick to what he's trying to do, he really tried to uh, match up with what Dortmund were doing and try to find a way to kind of deflate their offense, which was rather unsuccessful. Dortmund came out in a 4-2-3-1, very much expected. So to counter that, uh, we saw Manuel Baum implement a three-man back line. So we're in a 3-5-2 formation. Um, um, Renault would get the, the get the nod in goal. You had a back three of Nastasic, Sané, and Malik Tiao. Then you had a midfield five of uh, Ludwig, Harit, Mascarel, Benteleb, and Ochipka. And up top, you had Robbie Matando and uh, Gonzalo Panciencia. Matano likes to get in these games. Or they like to put Matano in these games for whatever reason, for speed, I guess. Uh, but we know how that game ended. It wasn't a pretty sight whatsoever. It was complete domination by Dortmund. Uh, but that was the first time we would see the three-man back line, which would be a theme uh, that we're going to see here more and more of, of Bauman. I think that's how we're going to go going forward. So a uh, 3-5-2 in that came to mirror Dortmund, but really we knew it was going to be unsuccessful. Um, I see why he did it. He wanted to match what Dortmund were doing, trying to deflate their wing play. But you got to stop all the play, not just the wing play. And unfortunately, yeah, this was this was an unsuccessful formation for Manuel Baum. Now, speaking of mimicking formations, uh, we would see that again. But this time, to our benefit, uh, we would play another good team, Stuttgart, who were at the time, I think, fifth in the table. They came out with a 3-1-4-2. Uh, and Manuel Baum and Schalke came out in the exact same more same formation of a 3-1-4-2. Uh, again, Frederick Renov would get this nod in goal. We had a back three of Nastasic, Tiao, and Sané this time. Uh, Omar Mascarell in the pivot position. Then you had a, a, an attacking four of Ludovic, Harit, Bazduan, and Ochipka. Then up top, you had Paciencia and Mark Ut. Uh, this proved to be a pretty decent lineup for Schalke. In terms of the formation, this is what Baum is looking for, really, with his team. Uh, he likes that three-man back line because he can put more people in the midfield to try to uh, clog it up and gain possession. Uh, we did a good job of uh, neutralizing Stuttgart to the, to, for the most part. Um, Renov will become a, a, a theme in all these games because he, had to make, he has to make big saves for this team to have a chance at anything in this season. Uh, but uh, what we saw with the back three plus Mascarell, you kind of have four defenders there. And it really, if you, you got the pressure on you, you can put back those two wingers of uh, Ochipka and Ludovic to help out to make a back five or back six, if you will, when times get tough. But uh, this is a very offensive-minded formation for uh, Benuel Baum, and I think this is the right formation to see going forward. But against Stuttgart, this obviously ended well for us, 1-1. Uh, very positive result considering how we played against Dortmund. Now the next mat game would be a uh, – not a test spiel, but it would be a DP Pokal. It was like a test spiel uh, against Schweinfurt. Well, it should have been a test spiel, right? Uh, Schweinfurt made it difficult at the beginning for Schalke. Uh, they came out in a 3-5-2, thinking Schalke maybe was going to do the offensive uh, system again to try to combat that. They did very well, actually, and they scored the first goal by Toman. Uh, but, you know, Schalke came out in a 4-2-2-2, uh, 
uh, an odd formation there. I, I mean, Schalke scored five goals, but it's Schweinfurt, so you can't really take too much from that. But uh, this you can you kind of exclude this formation because again, it's a Dia People Cow match against a lowly Schweinfurt. Uh, it could have been a test spiel if you wanted to call it, but um, yeah, it's it, this one I think is, is an enigma. Uh, something you can just throw out there because they're just a game that you know we want they want to try something different to see what the team would what the team would look like if we tried another formation then we had the uh, relegation six pointer if you will against Mainz the fifth game uh rounding up the first five games for Manuel Baum uh Mainz would come out in a 4-2-3-1 and so you're wondering what kind of formation we would see from Manuel Baum's side we've seen many different variations of different things this would be the third time we would see the 3 one 4 2 for Schalke, Emmanuel Baum, uh, they went with a back three of Sané, Kabak, and Nastasic. Uh, we would see a pivot point of Mal Omar Mascarell with a, a front four of Ludwig, Harit, Schof, and Ochipka. And then on top, you had Ut and Paciencia. Um, again, this uh, formation caused trouble for, for Mainz at times. Mainz did obviously cause trouble for Schalke. Um, what seems to be the problem for Schalke is defensively they cannot be marked. They can't mark anybody, and it's not to the formation, not to the cause of the formation. It's just the players aren't playing up to where, where they really should be. Uh, but they came out with the 3-1-4-2. Uh, looked pretty decent. Uh, I mean, got a decent result. 2-2. We should have got a win in that game, um, you know, considering who we played against. But obviously, the team is struggling at the moment. We've seen uh, since Baum has been there that they brought in um, a team psychologists to really try to get into the psyche of the team because they're underperforming massively. Uh, even against a game against um, Wolfsburg this past weekend, 3-1-4-2 once again, but again, it's it's the personnel on the pitch that's not playing up to the standards. The tactics are there, I think, with the three three center backs back there, uh, plus the two wingers to come back and help, and Omar Mascarell in front. You got six guys in there that really should be clogging up that defense and stifling the opposition. And what we're seeing from Schalke at the moment is just lapses in judgment, lapses in defense, causing these you know these breakdowns, and we saw Wolfsburg in the first half in particular take advantage of this against Schalke. And so... They need to find a way to get through this because we even Mark Ut came out and said after the match is that we we're just underperforming. It's nothing nothing else matter nothing else outside of that. We are underperforming. We should be playing a lot better and we're not. Um, so you know going forward, I think the formation we will see more than not more often than not will be the three one four two. Um, it's uh, it's a it's a it's an interesting top uh, interesting formation because you obviously are attacking with six players maybe seven players at times. Uh, when, you, when you have the ball in possession and you're in the opposition's half. Defensively, again, you know, you drop down with Ludovic and Ochipkar uh, to make a back five. Plus, you have many, um, Omar Mascarell in front of in front of the five to make it six back there. And obviously, the, the, the two center midfielders are dropping back as well. So, you you got ten guys behind the ball or eight guys behind the ball, nine guys behind the ball. So, in theory, it should work well to clog out that middle and force opposition to the, to the, to the wings. But unfortunately, at the moment... Schalke is not stopping anything, and uh, it's they're getting break, broken down. They got to figure it out quick because uh, at the moment they're bottom of the table and it's uh, looking bleak. But I think going forward, the three one four two can be successful. They have the pieces there. They just got to get the guys to play. I mean, I mean, Harit gets taken out in the first half against uh, Wolfsburg. It's not a good look. Um, you know, maybe you've got to bring in some of the younger guys who have the passion, uh, who have that drive, to, and get them in the games to try to change this momentum because. Uh, it's looking very difficult at the moment, but that's but that's what's been the tactics so far from Manuel Baum. A variety of looks, but we have, I think, the formation going forward, and let's see what the team can do, because I think with uh, Ut up in attack and have some other pieces around him, this could work, but we need some luck, some some momentum to go our way, and uh, time will tell if we can do it. Didn't look good coming out international break, but we'll see coming up uh, here in the next few games before the um, the winter pauses to see if the boys can turn it around Um to end this bleak 2020 season. Thank you again for uh, joining us here at Shock America. We appreciate all the support you've given us here, not only on YouTube, but also on the, on the air, airwaves as well. Uh, thank you once again. And for those, you know, please join us in our live podcast for the chats we have. We love to chat with the supporters uh, to get their point of view live on, on air, uh, throw curveballs our way. We love it. So we want to answer all the questions for, for the Shaka fans and get them out there. Uh, and even reach out to the clubs when the club when we can and, and get get you know their side of the story as well. So uh thank you once again, Loita. 
Uh, if you haven't done so yet, please subscribe to the page. It'd be much appreciated. You can follow us on social media. Here's all our handles right there. So uh, make sure you follow that. Keep tuning in as we will try to bring you as much information as possible for Schalke, uh, not only on the podcast ways, but also here on YouTube and on Twitter and Instagram as well. So follow us everywhere at Schalke America, and, until, and we'll catch you on the next video. Tschüss.